everyone knows about aimbot. It's it's a major problem in CS:GO and whatnot. But that that's boring. Have you ever heard of aim not, where um, every time you point your crosshairs at an enemy, the cursor will move itself away, so you can't hit anyone. And this is because violence is never the answer. Oh my gosh, this is magic. When I was beginning to work on this project, I was thinking to myself, what is the least amount of work I can do while still having a finished product? And, well, the answer is very, very little. So, it turns out that there's a crosshair setting that you can change that makes this all so much easier. So you go into the console and you type CL underscore crosshair style 1. And now what you'll see when I bring a gun out is if I aim at the enemy, not at, not at my team, if I aim at the enemy, it'll turn red. And that's how we can detect that there is an enemy in the sights. So, so now we can go back into the recorded video and find the frames where it turns red. So what we need to do is take a screenshot of the area and then open it in Photoshop. From there we just compare the pixel values with the two different colors and find a general range of where I can just put in the code uh, of checking the RGB values. So then we import some values, define some variables for a window, start a while loop to grab the image every frame, and then convert it to RGB, get its width and height, get the RGB values, and compare that RGB value to see if it's within a certain range, and if so, move the mouse. So how well does it work? Oh, oh, oh I can't, I can't aim. I'm trying to aim and I can't, it's not letting me. Oh my gosh, this is magic. This is really frustrating. I don't. I even played one game without bots, no. and you can guess how it went. We try to shoot someone. Oh, I'm just bad at the game. Oh my god! When I tried a second time, the aimbot did what it was supposed to do, and that was because of the thingy. It was not me. I was not expecting it to either work that well or or just work at all. So let's do my other specialty, which is making my life unnecessarily harder, such as me writing this script during my math class and also me deciding to write a neural network to decide if there's a person within the sites to to move the mouse. So basically how machine learning models work is you have your organized label data or you don't have to label it and then you have your model and you chuck all of that data at your model and your computer learns from it. The good thing about this is that you don't have to explicitly program so uh, for more complex things you can just have your computer learn but the downside is you have to organize that data and sometimes the computer doesn't do what you want it to do and also sometimes, like in this case, it actually takes more work to create the model than to actually program it to do what you want. Okay, so as you can probably tell by my haircut in my shirt, I've been editing this video for an incredibly long time. I don't even have the script anymore because it doesn't apply. Um, but basically this is how this is going to work. So for the machine learning portion of the project, I um, there were two parts. There's uh, designing and creating the data set, and there is designing the model. So for the data set, I screen recorded two videos. One was just me walking around the map with no bots, no enemies, so um, I could tell the computer what not to shoot at, and I walked around the entire Dust2 map. And then the other part was just playing against bots and just trying to get my crosshairs in range. And then the longest part was to label the data um, I wasn't going to like go through every single frame and then create an array like that, so I kind of automated it, but I still had to find every single frame with uh, 
a person in it in the middle and then move that in Premiere to the end so I would have like a bunch of video of just no no people in the frame and then at the end there would be just people in the frame and then from there I could determine the number of frames and the number the, the number of frames people in and not in the frame and then create an array that would label all the data and so I also wrote a program to cut out all the frames in the video and turn them into images and also crop the images into the right size so I could feed them into my model what I ended up with was a lot of frames so it was a decently sized data set not anywhere large by comparison but um, I think that was the most efficient way I could do it even though it didn't feel very efficient at the time so let's chuck it at my model so the result of this project is the world's worst aimbot and something that's just really 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 aggravating to play with I mean it gives you like motion sickness for making the mouse jump around so much. I hate it. But I mean, I guess that was the point the whole time. The disappointing part of this disappointment of a project is that if you walk up close enough, the model won't recognize that it's a person uh, because I didn't give it any training information about um, about close up. So, yeah. If you like this video, or want me to make a video on something like this again, consider liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, clicking the bell icon, um, looking at my other videos, anything for the YouTube algorithm. That would be appreciated. Um, and that's it. Peace.